So let me introduce you to sort of a new friend in the shop. This is a Perkins number no. four fly press. I've had several blacksmiths in here who say this is the biggest fly press they've ever seen. This was in machine shops and blacksmith shops prior to hydraulics becoming sort of everywhere and affordable. And it transfers this angular momentum into a direct and controllable and irresistible push, really. It's just such a simple, elegant old tool. This is on loan from my friend Ken Jordan, whom you met, whom you will meet again. You see these sort of Acme screws? They're not exactly Acme screws because it's a triple helix. There are three separate sets of lands here in this um, thread arrangement. I'm thinking they do that so that the thrust, which is input primarily from one side and would tend to sort of rack the shaft and cause maybe axial misalignment, that kind of keeps the shaft centered and the thrust coming down evenly and resist any tendency for it to bind so it operates smoothly. But what this does is transfers a really irresistible push in slow motion to a specific point of contact. Handy. Sort of what my power hammer does, only controllable and very central, very pinpoint. I am only beginning, just beginning, to become acquainted with this thing. There are guys who use these a lot and in fact consider them the most versatile forging tool in their shop. I hope I come to that point. Before we talk about tooling, let me talk about, I solved a problem here a couple days ago about how to locate it in my shop. I like it next to my crane so I can swing it out of the way because it'll be weeks or months at a time that I don't use it and the crane will move it back out of the workspace. But if it's just sitting on the floor and you're rotating this, when it comes up against the resistance, the angular momentum of the fly press itself tends to twist the whole thing. Look at here. You see how that flange is broken off of that foot? Two of these legs have that broken off. That's because it's always resisting that twisting moment down at the floor level and finally the casting failed. I just took this little piece of one by one. It was a scrap that was laying around and I've got one leg wedged in there so it cannot move in this direction or that direction. It's just going no place, not moving. I took, took this hook and chain, which Cy and I forged a few years ago, and it just happens to drop right over one of the anchor bolts on the crane. And it stops this fly press from sliding in the clockwise direction right here. So those two immovable points solve the whole, whole problem of twisting and I can lift it up and put it in the back of the shop. Almost there. So I will freely confess, I am a rank amateur with a fly press, but I'm really excited at the possibilities. So I made this jig for bending. You know, you can adjust the width, put bends in there. You can put different shaped dies in, ball press. You can put texturing dies in there. You can put lining dies in there. You can put round drifts for drifting round holes. You can, well, who knows what you can do. I am anxious to learn from you guys. I mean, send me your ideas, send me your pictures. I've looked at really neat videos on YouTube using fly presses. They're great tools. I've got mine located in the shop now. I'm beginning to make the tooling for it. I expect good things to happen with this old boy. But it's just elegant. There's everything you need and nothing that you don't need. That's sort of a hallmark, isn't it, of old machinery. Cold, it strips, the slug is almost out, we're beginning to get the shape. 